Welcome to my YouTube page. My name is Minister Christine Harrell and I am with Zoe Life Enterprises. We are a life coaching um, business and also I'm a pastoral clinical counselor. I'm with the Masters in Pastoral Clinical Counselor. So I am going to teach today on identifying unhealthy and possibly toxic points in relationships now here is you're just getting point number one on this particular feed but you will be able in later days to get the rest of their eight points but i'm going to really talk about need based relationships right because what i find out when i'm dealing with people in relationships that it's very tricky to define where you end and where you begin we call that enmeshment but there's also a challenge in understanding why some people don't have a capacity to meet our particular needs. And I'm going to use some biblical truth in the end, but I just want to give you some thought today to think about, is my relationship I'm in unhealthy, toxic, or healthy, right? So the first point, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to pause, and these are really reflective this is really a reflective time for you to think back about yourself, not necessarily your spouse or the significant other or person you're with, right? This is about you. This is about you sitting back and evaluating. What do I believe? What do I want? What do I desire? And have I not been authentic, 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 authentic in what I want and who I am and who I'm connected to? So this is very self-reflective, and I, I really am going to not go through this fast. I want to pause and then give you some takeaways. Let's start. Ask yourself first, do I have a relationship with myself separate from anyone? Right? How much time have I been outside of a relationship and I was happy and content with being myself? Am I able to be without a relationship? I mean, intimacy, living together, sex outside of you, just you being with you. Am I able to be out of a relationship and just be alone and single by myself? And if you are married, this is for you to challenge yourself even before you were married. How soon did you get married? Is this your first is this, is this the person that you were with from the very beginning of probably your early adulthood? Is this more than one marriage? Uh, what has been your main focal point, right, for relationships? So if you've been in only one marriage, think about the time before you were married. Oh, did you rush right in from your mother's house to a relationship? Right, because some of us are honest with ourselves because we've been married so long, we have not seen like who was I before I married you? What needs did I have before I married? Because here is the honest to goodness truth we've been taught, particularly Christians, we've been taught that marriage is the identity of who you are, marriage is to go to, marriage is what we need in order to be complete. But scripture says clearly, I'm complete in Christ. Right. And so our marriage is the coming together in the natural realm, two people coming to do a covenant relationship in God on earth together. We have just never been about heaven, but it has been the demonstration of supposedly what the covenant is between Christ as the bride, us as the bride, and then Christ as the soon coming bridegroom. Didn't want to go there first, but I want us to think about how have I been single in ever in my life? If you've only known marriage, then you only know the relationship with someone else, right? And this is not even a, a predictor for you to be divorced or married or you should get married. This is just self-reflection, right? So number one, how do I know who I am? Is it based upon what I do, who I am? or who I am connected to, or even the roles I play. Do I have an identity outside of this particular person? Right, Because even in marriage, you have to begin to identify where I begin, where he ends. He is a man. We have femininity as women. Our male and female 
are not easily understood with each other because we are coming from our own particular context, right, of our gender, right? So there is a separation, even in marriage, that I am female, you are male. How you respond as a male and how I respond as a female are two different ways. Our needs are different, right? Our personalities are different. Our desires are different. Our mindsets are different. We are not called to walk together in marriage, right? Even relationships being being one person without individual personalities, right? The two become one, not the two halves become one whole. Two whole people become one in a spiritual bond of marriage. That means we put aside every other relationship to build a bond and unity, right, together that does not take away from my identity or my individuality. Let me say that. So, number two, what ways have I understood what I need in a relationship with this person? Here's the caveat, which I understand personally after being married more than one time. I don't think I ever sat down and said, what do I need from this person? Is this person able to give that to me? All I knew, and I'm going to talk about this number three, all I knew was I grew up feeling unloved and feeling invisible. And so that was the driving force for always being in a relationship with the man, right? I need to be loved. I need to be understood. I'm going to talk about that point three. But what ways have I even come to terms with what do I need, right? I've always been a very independent woman. I never needed a man to lord over me, right? struggle with submission in marriage. I did because I was very independent. As I began to grow in my relationship with God, as I began to understand biblical truth and principles, as I began to grow and heal, then I was able to really do what the scripture says about submission, right? But submission was always a way of dominance growing up, right? So, what need do I have with this person? Because oftentimes, even after 30, 40, 50 years, you realize and you reflect back, like, I have not had my needs met in this relationship. I didn't go in. I went in, and a lot of women are taught you go in to please the man. You go in, that's how, why we have sex. That's why we have relationships. That's why we do what we do. We are taught from the time I grew up, I understood I'm to make a man's plate. I watched my mother do it. Our job was to take care of the man. I did that in relationships and in marriage, right? But always denying what I actually needed because I never gave thought to what do I really need, right? And so you can get into the relationship and you realize after you've been married a while, like what needs have I had? And now I'm changing and growing and maturing and getting older. Those needs tend to change and shift for both the male and women. So I'm not even talking about just the female, but the man's needs change, right? The man's sexual needs may change based on his age, based on any medical affliction, based on all other stuff. Things change, right? And do I have the capacity to not have my needs met? that are so important to me to be in this relationship and not be resentful, not be angry and not be mad. Can I do this? And naturally, beloved, you cannot do this and I cannot do this in our own strength. There has to be a strength, a force that comes from something beyond who you are and that is God. But can I maintain this, right? In a healthy manner where I have some sense of contentment and satisfaction in that place. Here's the other thing. If I marry, do I understand the assignment God has given me for this particular person, right? The assignment's very dependent on what God has committed you to do, right? And so oftentimes we don't have none of this clarified and we wind up, I, I've seen women do it, marry 20, 30 years and go, I just wasted my life. Because I come to the conclusions that I am more than just his wife, more than just a mother. I am a woman and I have certain needs. So there we have that. So have I thought about it? Have I sat down and said, this is what I want? And this is to any couple, premarital, about to get married, thinking about marriage. This is to you. Sit down and talk about what needs do I have and what do I expect from this individual, right? Do this in the beginning. Don't wait till you're in it. 
10 years and then say, oh my God, I'm not, and I'm angry. Well, yeah, because you have not sat down and said, hey, this is a need of mine. Is Do you have the capacity? This is a very important need of mine. Do you have the capacity? Here, here, just like in sexuality, some women have been sexually abused and sexually hurt and sexually wounded. And so for a man who is very high natured sexually, yes, it's a very, this is a very honest conversation. If he's high natured and you're frigid because you have not been healed from your trauma sexually, then that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. He's going to want more than you can have the capacity to give. That is an issue. It's, now, here it is. Is this a deal breaker or not a deal breaker? So, number three. This is the big thing I'm going to kind of stay at for a little while. How has the depth of the relationship been connected based upon my childhood unmet needs? Have I come into this relationship unrealistic Trying to get needs I never got met from my biological mother and father. Am I dumping this on the other person? Am I expecting you to love me like no one in my life has loved me? My love tank is empty. I have this great depth need to be loved. And I expect you to be that individual that will come in and consume me and pour into me and just give me all of this stuff that I did not get from my mother and I did not get from my father. And beloved, that is one of the biggest problems we have in relationships because that is not realistic. That is not what happens. There is no capacity uh, for any finite, fickle human being to love you in such a way that it's all inclusive right? Based on the things you did not get met in childhood. There's going to be an issue. I, I love the book, right? The Five Love Languages by, by, um, I think it's Gary Small. I think, um, but that book is very powerful. And I tell most couples and most marriage couples to read it, read it, find out what is your love language. Here's the other thing. What is it? What does love mean to you? Is love lust and sex? It's love meeting every need. It's love staying together. It's love the five, the five love. What is your love language? Is it affection? Is it words of affirmation? Is it physical touch? Is it gifts? Is it service? What is it? Because here's what I recognize. We give what we want. And it's never going to be satisfaction. Because I'm giving you what I think you should know I need. I am a big gift. I'm a gifter. I like gifts. Right. Um, and, 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 and then the love languages will change. But I like gifts. Right. So I give gifts because I like gifts. And the disappointment comes in when I expect people to know my love language is gift, particularly my husband. And that's not his particular gift. So he doesn't have the capacity to understand. We don't give what we want. We give what the other person desires. And that is the whole biggest mix up, beloved. Of, of relationships in marriage. The disappointments of unrealistic expectations to be met because we have not sat down with ourselves and determined what do I want in a spouse? What do I need in a mate? But who am I first, right? So let me just go over a couple of things that are unmet needs. In your mind, right? Because you're going to do kind of a little, little assessment. Think about growing up in childhood from your biological father or mother. And if either one of those were present, were not present, excuse me. That means you have not had these needs met. Just, I'm going to go over it. Father and mother, did you get, the, were you loved growing up? Did you feel emotionally loved? Not provided for, roof, shelter, clothes on your back. Did you feel loved by your mother? Emotionally connected to her, nurtured? Did you feel loved by your father? If they were absent, then that answer would be no. Did you feel respected growing up? Were you able, and I understand this because old school, children should be seen and heard, and there's no such thing as respect, but individual human beings require respect. I believe children desire, require respect just like parents do, but was I respected? Was any, what, did, did my parents have boundaries? Did they teach me boundaries? Was, was certain things able to have a sense of my own sense of I can dress myself, I can be myself without someone disrespecting the person who I am, right? Did I feel accepted? Did I feel like the black sheep from my mother or father? Was I accepted? Did I feel, here's the opposite to accepted, was I rejected? 
Did I feel my biological mother or father rejected me? Was I not the favorite? Was I the black sheep? Was I an abandoned child? And he raised another family and I felt rejected. I was not accepted. The need to be accepted. The need for security. Did I feel secure? Did I feel secure physically, not, not fearing abuse or, 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 or violence? Did I feel security because I was cared for and we didn't move from place to place growing up? Did I feel security because I felt like my parents would protect me and be there for me? The need for affection. Was I nurtured? Right? Did I feel loved? Was I held? Was was I did I not like to be held? Right? Was I held dysfunctionally? Was I dropped? Right? That all we had was words and nobody ever had any kind of emotional connection. And I really wanted one growing up. But that's not what we did. So I learned that's not what we do. Was I validated? The need for validation. Was I validated? Was I told, well done, you did really well in school? Or, yeah, you, you're very smart, but you're struggling in math. That doesn't mean you're stupid. Did my mother or father validate me? Did they say you're okay as you are? And when you struggle, I'm not only hearing how bad things were, right? I'm being told I have value, right? Did I have affirming words growing up? This goes back to validation. Did I hear well done? Did I hear I'm proud of you? Did I hear that from my mother and my father, right? The need to be understood. Did they understand me for me, right? Did my mother and father understand me for me? Did they want, my father wanted me if I was a boy to be like him. My mama wanted me to be like her. Did I struggle growing up being me, right? And have the privilege, right? And the freedom to be and to grow into who I was as a child, right? Was I taught? It's, you'll be surprised how many things our parents didn't teach us. As a woman, was I taught about being a woman? As a man, was I taught about being a man? Was I taught about who God is? Was I, was I taught or even even... Um, even tutored in areas when I, I, I struggled with, or did you help me get the help I needed when I struggled? Or did you just watch me struggle as a child, right? Was I protected? And we talked about that in security. Did you protect me? Do not let people hurt me, misuse me, mistreat me, talk down to me. What was, what was I, did I feel like you had me, that I was okay, right? And there was a heard. Did you hear me as a child growing up? My mother or my father, did you hear the pain I was in? Did you know I was being bullied? Did you know that things were not well? Did you know maybe perhaps I was molested and it was a big secret and I thought you as a parent knew? Did you hear me when I cried at night? Did you hear me saying, I don't want to do that again or I'm struggling? Did you really listen to my words and just kind of not being busy, so busy that you didn't hear what I was saying. Beloved, these factors have everything to do with your adult relationships. If no, if I said no to most of these father or mother, then I'm going to have a great, a great need, a great lack, a great desire that was not fulfilled. And I have to be healed in those areas as an adult. Otherwise, I'm going to expect every single relationship in my life to fulfill those needs that were not met in childhood. And it's unrealistic. No one can love you like you, like you should have been loved. No one can respect you like no one can accept you. No one can be secure. You cannot be secure in people. You may not have the affection and nurture. We are different people. You may not be validated. You may not be understood. You may not hear affirming words. You may not be understood. You may not be taught. You may not be protected. You may not be hurt in a relationship and guess what that's going to do to you beloved because a lot of this is really traumatic it's going to trigger you and keep you mad keep you floundering and wondering what's wrong with me keep you in a place where i'm flawed and i'm defected nobody loves me keep me in a place where i'm wondering am i loved or can you love me and is this enough love beloved let me tell you when these needs are not met there is a gaping Whole, their great chism of separation that happens in male and female relationships and great disappointment and great pain because I thought you would be that to me. Well, I thought you would be that to me. You would be my mother to me or my father to me and give me what I didn't get. And it's so unconscious and unspoken, but those are the biggest um division, the biggest places of offenses, the biggest places of hurt and pain in male-female 
relationships. It just is. Whether you're dating or whether you're married, these gaping holes create such toxicity in the relationship because here is two people who have really unrealistic needs to be expected the other individual to meet them and they don't have the capacity, particularly since you have not been healed. There is only one source that will provide these kind of needs for you and that is in your relationship with God. I'll talk about that later. Right, I have to recognize this man or this woman does not have the capacity to love me for me because they've struggled in some areas of their own. They're not healed in certain places. It goes back even to the sexuality and to the intimacy, the nurture and the intimacy and the touching. I'm not even talking about sex now. I'm talking about the ability to know someone, the ability to touch someone heart to heart, the ability to have a conversation in vulnerability and transparency without any offense, without the walls coming up, without you being triggered, about you not gaslighting me. Those things are big chasms. I mean, big dividing uh, situations that keep us at odds, at distance. And here is the remedy is healing, right? I And I will tell you, even in a marriage where even if one person has not got the healing you need, but you have the healing you need, then you understand totality that this individual who's flawed like I'm flawed, even though I got healing, we're flawed, fickle, finite, we're imperfect in our source of just the fallen nature of what we live in. And so I don't have the capacity to do that. So I'm going to go to the God who created me, right, through his son Jesus in my relationship. And I'm going to say, you said in your word that your love is so deep, so wide, so long. The height of it is beyond my understanding that you have love for me. You said there's nothing that will separate me from your love. So then I have a need to be met, to be loved. That love must come from my creator, my heavenly father. He said, how do you do that? That's another, that's another teaching. But that is a place where we get to in relationships. When you come to the end of yourself and you're at a place where you want to part or part in the ways, whatever, you still have to sit in the reality that how am I going to get my love need met? Because the next individual will be the same situation because what I did not get in childhood, I'm still going to expect this person to do it. And they may do some of the things that make me feel better, but the longing, the depths of what I really need. And the number one need for every child is three needs, love, significant, and security. No love, no significance. You can have a sense of physical and financial security, but I don't feel significant in who I am and value, and I don't feel loved, then there's still that gaping hole that will continue to haunt me for every relationship, for all the days of my life, unless I get that healing that I need to understand my parents could not do it. But that does not mean I'm going to be devoid of it. That means that I have to come into a deeper relationship right? Where there is a supernatural way, the hole in my soul, the love I need can be fulfilled. Or I will continually be, in, beloved, trust me, I'm in my fourth marriage. I didn't understand what I'm teaching you until probably 10 years ago, right? Because I thought that every man I married, he would love me like my daddy who wasn't there should have loved me, right? the nurture I didn't get from my mother. I expected every man to do that. And I had this gaping hole and this unrealistic expectation and kept selecting these men who were emotionally disconnected because of the absence of my own biological father. It was an unconscious thing I kept going to until I understood there are needs that can be met by God and for God that will help you in the fallen fickleness of relationships where people cannot do, there is one who can. And when you get that met, right, you can sit back and say, okay, is this relationship really realistically what I need, even though I'm getting the love need met? I will tell you, but that love need met will solidify, right, and validate and give you the identity and the strength and the hope not in people, not in a man to change, but God to change you so that you're able to endure some of the things that you may need to endure in a marriage because nothing is perfect. Every need cannot be met by an individual because, beloved, 
again, we have different backgrounds, different family origins, different cultures, different um, family rules, different pain and trauma, different, we just come from different places. And even the best Christians, no one can make you happy 24 hours. And if you are people pleasing in your relationship to make sure there's no conflict, there is always a, 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 a fake, uh, un uh, unauthentic uh, way you're dealing with each other, then you're still sacrificing yourself for, for fantasy. So, what ways have I recognized that my needs are unrealistic expectations? And this person may not have the capacity to give them to me. This is a gut-riching conversation you have with yourself. Because it's true. I don't have the capacity to meet every single need of my husband. And I won't try. I know very well myself and what I'm capable of. I know my level of long suffering. I know my level of patience. I know my level of forgiveness. I know me. And I know me the healed me. And the old me comes back and triggers and stuff. But I know how to respond differently because I've done the work. But I can't expect, and this is in any relationship, people to be who I am. It's not realistic. They don't get, and, and beloved, and my biggest revelation was everybody won't get me. Everybody won't understand me. Everybody won't like me. And this is just in all relationships. But I am still called to people to be a connector, right? To be a lover of people. That's that's just, that's me. I can't expect everyone I come in contact with to not be hurt, to not be untrusting, to not be the connector that I am, right? That's my calling, right? So I have to be honest about those expectations, it's just as simple as me being a minister of the gospel and being a counselor and my husband not particularly, let's be honest, like me talking to men to counsel men. I'm a, I've am been trained. I'm a life coach. I'm not just called to women. So that's been something we had to work through, right? Because I have boundaries and I am healed and I'm not looking for daddy's love and I'm not looking for mama's nurture. I am understanding fully who I am and fully what I'm dealing with as I help other people. Right. But here's the challenge. Other people's insecurities and work that they have not done will continue to come in and bombard you with those accusations, with sometimes gaslighting. And you have to be secure in who you is, you who, excuse me, who you are. So you're not cr crying and mad and angry and bitter and hostile. Because when you know who you are, who you are. It changes and shapes the way you respond to people. I no longer have to defend myself. I don't. I have a God who said, if I be for you, who can be against you? So let me finish. So I'm coming in on the 30 minutes and I didn't want to really go too far. But there is a place where my knees are met. The glorious, the glorious scriptures. This is Psalms 103, verses 1 through 6. And I love the translation. The Passion Translation. Listen what Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3. It says, with my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I'll bow in wonder and love before you, the Holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness? I'm not going to cry. You've done for me. You kiss my heart with forgiveness. In spite of all I've done, you've healed me inside and out from every disease. Even mentally, I would just add that. Even mental and emotional. You rescued me from hell and saved my life. You crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You are God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. How can I not expect my needs to be met, right? With my whole heart and my whole life and my innermost being, I'm in wonder and in awe how much who God loves me. From being an unloved child to now, to understanding that all the ways I've expected people to do it, I finally have the revelation that's not just head knowledge, 
but heart knowledge, but spirit knowledge that, oh my God, my God loves me in my fallenness, in my fickleness, in, in my insecurities, in my undoneness, in my conflicts, in my unrealistic expectations, in my, divor in, in my divorces, in my disappointments. My God through Christ loves me. And I've seen his hand of mercy. I've seen his hand of grace. I've seen his hand of restoration. I've seen his hand of reconciliation. I've seen him heal me and raise me from the dead, from COVID-19. I've seen God crown me with his love and his mercy. He supercharged my life, literally, so that I'm able to love even the unlovable and have long suffering for people who would hurt and mistrust me. So what I am saying to you, that we are the products that determine is my relationship unhealthy or toxic? Am I a toxic person? Because I haven't got the healing I need and I'm still expecting someone else to do it. And I'm mad and I'm angry and I'm bitter and I'm hostile and I'm trying to demand it. I'm trying to control it. I'm trying to fix it. But I can only go to God to have myself fixed and healed. No love, no relationship, no marriage. No person, not same sex, not the, the, the male, female. There is nothing that can fix your soul, your hurt, your heart. Nothing but God himself. And so the challenge is, am I toxic? Not my relationship, beloved. How I got the healing I need. Am I realistic in what I need from this person, right? Just asking myself, do I know who I am? Just in reflection, Right? Is what I who I am based on the roles I play on me being your woman, your wife, your mother, his mother, children's mother. Who am I first? And always goes back to me. Again, what ways have I understood what I need from this person? Is it possible? Right? How has the depths of my relationship? My childhood pain, my unmet needs, the trauma I encountered from biological parents. Have I got that resolved? Has God healed me? Have I looked at it? Have I seen it? Have I seen why my behavior, my thoughts, and my emotions are like they are based on what I've come up through, right? I got to get to the root to cut the tree down in order to be able to move forward, to know what I need healing from. I got to assess that stuff. It doesn't go away with time. It doesn't go away in love. You know, the fantasy, oh, I could just marry a man. He just love me and love would just take me through everything I've been through and heal. Beloved, that's not realistic because oh, there's only one healer. In his name, right? It's God the Father through Christ. Jesus is the healer. People aren't. Now, relationships can come and help you because God uses people. We can come alongside and teach you and show you and give you boundaries. But you have to be the one to determine, I need my own healing. At first, it comes from God Almighty, Yahweh, Jehovah, Rapha, the Lord that heals, right? And in what ways have I recognized that my needs are unrealistic? They're not realistic expectations. This person may not have the capacity to give me what I need. And beloved, I'm not just talking about sex, money, right? I'm talking about basic, significant respect, um, love, um, just security, right? Recognizing my personhood, stuff we talked about. Does this individual love me? Do they respect me? Do they accept me for me and not trying to change me and allow God to do that work? Am I secure in you? Do I have to worry about you cheating? Can I trust you? Let me just take it there, right? I require nurture and affection. Are you an affectionate person? If not, then I'm have an issue. Are you, or am I a person, don't touch me, don't hug me. I don't like being touched. That's another. Am I validating, babe? I really appreciate everything you do. I'm really thankful. Thank you for that. Right, And if I have a problem and you coming to me and communicating to me with respect and dignity, understanding you love me when you talk to me, right? Are these words affirming or they're hurtful? Are they sarcastic? Are they hurtful? Are you pointing your finger and always doing tit for tat? Do you always have a motive to hurt me if you feel hurt? Am I understood? Do you really understand and know me? And am I accepted as you know me until we grow and we prosper, right? 
Am I teachable? Because we learn from each other, right? And do you hear me? Do we communicate like this? Do you, the Bible says, be slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen. Can you listen and calm down? Can you really hear what I'm saying? Or are you just hearing yourself in your narcissistic mindset? Can you just hear you and you're right and you're always right? These are real issues, beloved, that have to be sought out and thought through for the individual. Like, it starts with me. I can only, I'm going to leave you on this. I can only control me. I can't control anything. And we can't control a baby cry. If you hold a baby, he's crying, he stops crying. You put him down, he cries again. That's a whole manipulating thing. Sometimes babies are colic, and you can't control the colic. You do stuff, you pat them, and he, the baby still cries. If you can't control a baby, how can you control a grown person? You can't control sometimes toddlers. We don't have the capacity to dominate or to control. This is where gaslighting comes in, right? Making a person feel like they're dumb, they're stupid for believing what they believe, and flipping it on them. I can't control what you think. I can't control what you believe. I can't control where you go. I can't control what you want. I can't control what you need. All I can be, right, is me and understand, can we come together and determine, is this an acceptable, viable thing that I can provide for you? If not, then we need to part. If loving you hurts me, then we have to part. If loving, if me giving myself to you, and it's sometimes, beloved, it's not love, it's lust. It's, it's, it's need. It's codependency. It's inadequacy. It's never wanting to be alone because I haven't been healed. It's not love, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. First Corinthians 13, right? Is it those things? Because if I haven't defined what real love is based on truth or what God says love is, beloved, guess what? then we're in trouble. So let me pray for you. As you listen to this, maybe one or two times, and have some reflection about what have I learned love is in my most unlovable state. Let me go back to the one who is love. God is love. His nature, his attribute, his personality, his DNA is love. The only way I can get that meat man is from him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the person who would listen to this on YouTube. I pray, Father, they would have an understanding about what the love is that they so desperately need, even before they get into male-female relationships. God, I just decree and declare divine healing. You said you're the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Heal your people on this line that are triggered, that are hearing all those needs that were met were not met with their biological parents. Let them know there is a healer. There is life coaching and pastoral counseling, even through Zoe Life Available, Lord. But there are people who can help walk them through this. And Father, help them to have self-compassion and be gracious to themselves. And so they won't walk into abusive relationships and places where they would get hurt even more, even deeper. Father, I pray for children and parents that have been wounded and that reconciliation hasn't taken place. Adult children that are wounded, teenagers that have been wounded by parents who are broken and didn't know. Lord, that you would bring restoration and healing to even to adult children in their relationships. Father, help parents understand the needs I talked about to their children, that their children are be heard and respected and understood and validated, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that this video would reach people and really reach and touch hearts to know that there is a bomb in Gilead and you can be healed mentally, renewed, emotionally healed and have good relationships, Father, that there are people who are trustworthy, people who will love you, people who can meet you where you are. Father, just continue to heal. Continue to make yourself known. Continue to reveal yourself. You said you would manifest yourself. Continue provide encounters for people who really may not know you. I pray that for people who don't know you who watch this. They don't really know who you are. That they would ask, who are you? And reveal yourself to me. The God of heaven. Lord Jesus, do it. And be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
Again, I thank you for your time. Um, if you need any information about Zoe Life or this conversation you want to have, please feel free, free to email me at zoe.lifeplc at gmail.com. That's zoe.lifeplc at gmail.com. God bless you and have a great day.